Hey everybody, welcome back to E Plus E. I am the host and owner of this channel, Erica. Hello. So look, you guys, we have our uh, season premiere of Only Murders in the Building. Y'all, and they blessed us with two episodes right away. Um, listen. I'm thoroughly excited. First of all, not only am I thoroughly excited, but then also, guess what? Some of my predictions was right. Okay? Like, you can't deny it. Listen, I've been watching murder, mystery, mystery, murder, suspense, crime, dramas, all that. Since I was a little pup. Like, five, six, seven years old. So, it's like, yeah. <laughs> so, as I predicted, Bang Glenn Roy's death, what we saw was not an actual death. I mean, come on. He, the way he fell was just so not right. It was super fake. And I'm just like, nobody don't know. Not one actor is taught to fall in that way. When they're dying. Not one. Not one. Paul Rudd is a veteran actor. And he just. <sighs> I'm telling y'all. That's so funny. That's so funny that I predicted that. I, I just felt it in my spirit. In my soul. Okay. And it does look like we're going to get some kind of relationship between. Um, Tobert. Which is Jesse Williams' character and our girl Selena Gomez, aka Mabel Mora. Um, so it's just really interesting. And I also am wondering, is this the final season? I feel like there's certain things that they're hinting at that this may be the last season. Um, first of all, Mabel is moving out of her apartment at the Arconia. Um, that's not to say. That's not to say that. Um, the show is leaving. Maybe she is. I can't see it working without her. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something about this season premiere that made me feel like this will be the final season. Um, and I feel like they're going to announce, announce it at like the penultimate ep episode that it'll be the final season. But who knows? We'll see. I enjoyed the first two episodes. It was very delightful. Um... The teaser trailer and the trailer that we saw is both from the first episode. Um, possibly the second episode. But yeah, so what we saw were like the first two episodes, which is fine. You know, don't don't give off the whole season, I guess. But yeah, so it was really good. It was really interesting. I enjoyed seeing them in action. I enjoy seeing all these characters come into play. I do not feel like we have spoken and or seen and or heard our killer as of the first two episodes. I just don't feel it. I don't feel it. It's someone we have not been introduced to at this time. So with all those free things said, I am going to attach the video where I said that Paul Rudd is not, or uh, Ben Glenroy is not He's not dead. I'm going to post that here. You'll see it be at the top somewhere. Anyway, let's hop into the first episode. Um, what do you guys think? Oh, let's, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk about, um, the opening montage, not the opening montage, but like the theme song, music and things like that. Did you notice they no longer have Bunny down there? Oh, so sad. Pete, Bunny, rest in peace. Bunny Folgers, we love ye. We love thee. We love you, girl. And so sad. So sad. So now we have Howard walking his cat <laughs> across the screen at the beginning of the song, which is just fine. <laughs> Um, then they're going to stage, let me see, why well, white this in cursive, y'all? Y'all know I can barely read, I can barely read. 
So we find out that Meryl Streep's character, Greta, no, Loretta, Loretta Durkin, I think it is, they said, Loretta Durkin, um, it, it, it seems like she's been trying to be a stage actress her entire life, her entire life, and it's just, doors are getting shut and shut and shut and shut, she's not getting those calls, she's not getting nothing, and she's just down and out, down and out. Then she comes into the theater and she auditions as the nanny for the play. Uh, what is the name of that play? What is the name of the play, y'all? I'm sorry. Death, Death Rattle. Death Rattle. Ooh, that's a little morbid. Anyway, um, and, he's, and, and Oliver says the words that she's been waiting to hear. First of all, okay. The word she's been waiting to hear is, where have you been? Oh, so, like, when they were leading up to that part, I, like, I filled in the blank. I was like, the words that everybody wants to hear is, you've got the part. No, they was like, where have you been? So, of course, they rejoiced. The Do it look like they're going to have some kind of tryst, some kind of relationship? We haven't seen Oliver get romantic within the series. We haven't seen him have interest in anyone. So, this is a new, that's a new plot, and I'm thankful for that, because I was starting to wonder when that was going to pick up. So, um, we got him and, and um, Loretta, you know, kind of kiki key, and I guess. We'll see. We'll see. And then, um, Ben Glenroy is, of course, a star. He's kind of a dick. I'm sorry to say that. It did, that one even said it to either the end of the first episode or sometime in the second episode. But I felt it. I felt that energy as soon as he walked through that door. I said, Ooh. he said, who farted? <laughs> that's a little gross, but whatever. You know, so I think that's a very different type of character that he's ever played. Um, I don't see Paul Rudd as being like that type of a person at all. Um, I think it's a very different character, very different role for him to play. I think it's a difficult one, but who knows? I think I think he may delight in it because he's so opposite of it. And you know, I'm gonna say this with us introverts, I, and I, people who are pleasant, people who are people pleasers. I feel like we all have this thing where we would want to, we want to listen, we want to, uh, we want to be crazy, we want to be dicks sometimes you know but it's just not in our it's not in our makeup it's not in our genes it's not in our dna we can't do it we can't it's a difficult thing it's a difficult thing so anyway he comes in and he like introduces himself to everybody um and he gets to charles and charles said i'm brazos and he's like who who and so it's like wait Wait, <laughs> wait, <laughs> so, um, we'll get to that in a little bit, um, so yeah, he's a little bit of a dick, Jesse Williams' character is Tobert, Tobert is a documentarian, I get that right, he's a documentary, <laughs> he's a documentary specialist, okay, that's what he is. Um, and he is so fine, very, very easy on my eyes, mm, love him, and so he's following around Ben Glenroy, um, trying to, you know, document his life, I think he's been with him for a little bit of time at this point, like he's not, they're not unfamiliar with one another. Then they have this interesting couple, um, we have Donna and Cliff. Donna is the producer. Cliff is her son. Cliff is gay, according to Donna. And they have a very inappropriate kiss. They have a very inappropriate relationship. Um, I don't know a mother and her gay son that does things like that. And I know a lot of gay boys. And I know a lot of mamas who treat them like they look gay boys, even though they grown. So, uh, that'll be interesting to keep going on with that relationship interesting I guess I guess we'll see how that you know, relationship plays out I got a feeling one of the two of them are gonna die um and then we have Bobo he is
is one of the actors that um, auditioned and got the role or got a part within the play. He's a cutie pie. Um, Jonathan, remember Jonathan? Jonathan in the second season was the crush of Howard. So Jonathan is there. He got a part in the play. And he is playing the understudy of Ben Glenroy. So, um, do we suspect him? Hell no. Nah. Mm-mm. I'm telling you, I do not feel like we've gotten a killer. At least not in this first episode. I don't think we have. Um, KT... KT is the stage manager. She's a little, she's a little hefty. She's my, she's a little portly. I like her. She's a cutie pie. Uh, she's very stage manager-y. Um, you've known about those over the years. I don't know about you guys, but I have. And you've heard about, you know, having a stage manager mom, having a stage manager whatever. They're just kind of over the top, very firm, very stern. They know what they feel and that's what they're doing. And they ain't trying to have it. They ain't trying to hear it. And so... You won't get that from Katie. I don't think she's the killer either. We have Dickie. Now, Dickie... I can't remember who Dickie is. I wrote the name down, though. Bless his heart. Or hers. I don't know who Dickie is. I don't know. I, I'm like I'm a Kiki Palmer, that man. I don't know who that man is. I'm so sorry, but I don't know who that man is. We have Kimber. She is so cute. She's so cute. That's the one who we saw Selena Gomez in a trailer trying to bond with. And it just went all wrong as hell. Um, we have Ty. I don't remember that man either. Ty. I, I assume Dickie and Ty just got the part. I don't remember seeing them from any previous seasons. I think they're just actors within the stage play. Um, Death Rattle. I think that pretty much covers everybody from the stage play. So, catching up with our famous and lovely trio, it looks like Sunny or Mabel Mora has just really been very distant. She finished her apartment. It looks good. It looks really good. And it looks like she's ready to start another podcast. Like, our season three off on the podcast has been I think they said it had been four months see isn't that something when it's when it started when this so at the end of season two the teaser for season three stated that it had been a year since they had solved the murder Yet, we pick up, and it was four months ago. So, that's a little weird to me, four months ago. Like, I just, I don't quite know about this timeline, but I've said that, I've said that, I've said that <laughs> since the first season. That the timeline is not quite right. People's ages don't seem right. That's specifically the timeline of Charles's marriage or relationship with um what's that little girl name? With that lady. Cookie. Was it Cookie? Cook Cookie. Okay. So yeah, that was a little interesting. Um so she's okay, so she's finished the apartment. Um she has been very distant from the boys, from um from Oliver and Charles for whatever reason. Uh, and I honestly think that's a little bit of Selena Gomez's <laughs> trope as well. Like, I feel like that's a little bit of her, that's her makeup. I don't, I don't see her being like, I mean, I've said that before, but I feel like she's, she's so happy being on her own and doing her own thing, not answering to no one, doing everything that's on her own terms. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't think it's a sad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm very much like that as well. It's like, yeah, I can hang out and chill with y'all and kick it with y'all. But at the end of the day, guess what? I still enjoy my own damn company. I make the best company for me. Period. And I think that's a little bit how she is. Um, then we pick up with Oliver. And Oliver seems to be doing really well. He's so focused on this play. He wants to get himself back out there, get his name back out there, get his business back out there, and just win. Get the W, okay? And I feel that. I'm very understanding of that. 
We all are, Oliver. We all here for you. We all making it and striving with you, okay? Feel that. So, yeah, we, I enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing him and his, his snorts. <laughs> I can't even do it, but I, I love him. I love me some Oliver. Um, and it looks like Charles Hayden Savage has followed through on his relationship with Joy, which makes, brings me joy. I love that name, Joy. That's my daughter's middle name, actually. Um, and she got it from her, her auntie. That's my sister's middle name as well. So she's a, she's a, she's an auntie, she's a junior. She's a junior. She's a junior. Ah. Um, but yeah, um, he's definitely in that relationship, like it's flourishing, blooming and doing well. Thank goodness. Listen love at any it does not have an age or nothing else and i appreciate that about them falling in love or whatever they're doing at this time okay so in the first season um in the first episode we see meryl streep aka loretta really stretching her vocals there she started off as like i think she says kind of like scottish something and she was french canadian which, if you guys don't know, Detroit is French Canadian. You come here, there are a lot and tons and tons and tons of city or street. I would even say cities um, with French names. Um, but I mean, I can't say beyond Detroit because I don't really venture that far out of Detroit. <laughs> I'm just saying um, we we are a French Canadian city. Um, actually, we're French Catholic. Canadian. Does that make sense? Anyway, I think we're French Catholic, and then we also have a lot of French Canadian things going on over here as well. That's what I meant to say. All right. So I enjoy seeing her do her little vocal, her little voice. I, I just thought it was so cute. It was so interesting, and it was so interesting that she's now becoming that Meryl is playing such a vulnerable character. So she says she's not into table. She doesn't do table reads well. And that's probably why she's never um, moved further within her Broadway career. Um, and I feel her. And I'm just wishing, I'm hoping the best for her. <sighs> we love you already, Loretta. Like, oh, Meryl Streep is such a treasure. Every last one of those actors and actresses are a treasure but it's something about that Meryl Streep that just drives me absolutely insane I think she's just she's just so easy on the eyes and so brilliant and I love to hear her speak I, I enjoy her quite a bit so fingers crossed and fingers crossed also for her relationship with Oliver did you see how they were singing oh her voice is so lovely I believe that was her voice, right? Yeah. So they did a little duet. I don't know uh, what that song was. Here, let me look it up right now. I was, I, you know what? I actually had meant to do that. <laughs> what did she say? She said, the dearest, the dearest love. No. The dearest, the little love in all the world. The dearest love of them all is waiting somewhere for me. Okay. So, oh, Rogers and Hammerstein, Waiting Somewhere for Me is the name of the song. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. The lyrics seem so sad, but actually, and, and, and at the same time, inspiring. Um, because all is not lost on love. Nothing is lost. Nothing is, like, missed. Nothing is, you know what I'm saying? Like, love will find me, and I will find it. So, I, that song was very, very, um, I enjoyed it. Okay? Okay? So, um, also we learned, cause so, so, okay, so, Ben Glenroy died. Okay, on stage. She died. Um, and interesting enough, it did not coincide with how we saw the end of the season two. Because so season two, we saw 
Charles say something to did we did we did, girl let me take that back let me read that but I do not believe that we saw the conversation with between Charles and Ben Glenroy like I feel like at the end of season two when we saw that tidbit the teaser for season three they had some kind of a conversation they had a conversation and then um Charles threatened you know, in a threatening tone, leave her alone, right? So, um, clearly this is Loretta. Clearly this is Loretta he's saying leaving her alone too because, well, we'll get to that. So, he said that. But this one, I don't feel like we saw that conversation happen between the two of them. I don't feel like we saw it. Anyway, um, he dies. And uh, and then they go back to this apartment. I think it's um, Oliver's apartment. They go back to Oliver's apartment. They're still going to have the after party cause for the opener. But, you know, you know things are weird. Things are weird. Um, some of them open. So, okay. So, some of them open their gifts. So, Ben gave everybody a gift. And it's a simple handkerchief. And I don't know if it's a... If it's a rose, if it's a cherry, but the, it has some kind of red declaration on it. And it's like, it's cute. It's really cute. It's a pretty red. And so everyone gets this handkerchief that was involved with the show. I mean, including stage management and all those people as well. So, um, yeah, it's just, I just, it was just really weird how that happened. So. Anyway, so they're talking, they singing, they're kind of lift, their spirits are lifting up a little bit, and they're like memorializing him in a good way. And and you hear this voice, who farted? And it's this motherfucker, Ben Glenroy. Okay, so I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? So then, originally, initially, I thought, okay. So we're going to see if death at a different time or what? Also, also, oh, 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 my prediction. I said, I also predicted that Ben Glenroy would be the newest penthouse resident of the Arconia. And guess what? He is. And guess what that means? Guess what it means? There was another murder in the building. Absolutely, absolutely, y'all. Uh, look at me. Good pat on the back. I ain't gonna dust my shoulder off. I'm gonna pat myself on the back because that was good. I'm telling y'all, I am genius, genius, genius. Yes, I do feel like I don't want to spoil this for me. I don't want to spoil it for you all either. But I just, I also love spoiling it for me. <laughs> I like being right. Who doesn't like to be right? Even if I'm right. I still want, I'm still always shocked and surprised. I'm like, oh, because cause my predictions are right. So I'm still, still in the shock zone. So we can move on. Okay. We can move on. I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I My leg, I am so used to like shaking my leg so much. And um, when you see the camera shaking, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> 